the joy for the day draweth nigh when the workers gather home. Hymn number 620. Jordan stormy banks, I stand for light to gain and fair and happy land where my my persons lie. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and draw with me? I am bound for the promised land. Oh, are all those wide extended plain times one eternal day? There Christ the Son forever reigns and scatters her away. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. When shall I reach that happy place and be forever blessed? When shall I see my Father's face and in His kingdom rest? I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will win? No, go with me. I am bound for the promised land. Feel with the flight, my raptured soul. Would he hear no longer? longer stay though Jordan's wave around me roll fearless I'll launch away I am bound for the promised land I am bound for the promised land oh who will come and go with me I am bound for the promised land. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. The scripture reading comes from Joshua chapter 3, verse 10 through 17. And it says, And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Prezrites and the Gershites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. Now therefore, take for yourselves 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord and the, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. So it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. 
And as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan, and the feet of the priest who bore the ark dipping, dipped in the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of harvest, that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zeratan. So the waters that went down into the sea of the Arabha, the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Then the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you all the honor and glory and praise this morning, this Sabbath day. We come to you in your house of worship to rest, to trust, to renew ourselves and redirect ourselves to you, Lord. We thank you for bringing us here and sending your Holy Spirit to fill this place, fill our hearts and our minds, Lord. We ask that you uh, be with all of our pathfinders that are leading out this service today and May all the honor and glory go to you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Okay, good morning, church. So the task is mine this morning to welcome each and every one of us to our Pathfinder Sabbath. And this Sabbath we're featuring miracles, that what we're featuring this morning. And the theme that we're going to look at today is PBE, because um, throughout the, this year we have been studying the, from the book of Joshua and Judges. So those who, are, will, those who will be taking part will feature most of that from that book today. Now the question is asked, who is a pathfinder? And a pathfinder is a person who go ahead and discover or show other a part are away. That's a pathfinder, a person who will get ahead of a group and find the best way to travel through an unknown area. We're traveling now through an unknown area, and that's why we have pathfinder. So pathfinder is not only to dress in your khaki and your black and your yellow and looking pretty, but pathfinder are those who go ahead and find a pathway for that those who will come after will find that way. So this morning, we want to welcome each and every one of you to our Pathfinder Day, and I hope that as we worship today, it will be a blessing to us. Our heart will be blessed, and the name of God will be glorified. Before I leave, though, I want to leave a thought with us. It said here, I ask God. I ask God for strength, and God gave me difficulty to make me strong. I ask for wisdom, and God gave me problem to solve. I asked for prosperity, and God gave me a brain to work. I asked for courage, and God gave me danger to overcome. I asked for love, and God gave me troubled people to help. I asked for favor, and God gave me opportunity. I received nothing I wanted, but I received everything I need. Our scriptural lesson for this morning said, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So not everything that we ask for we'll get, but God give us everything that we need. As we worship today, let us have a spirit-filled Sabbath in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath. This day is glorious. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience with PBE on Pathfinders. A lot of people ask me, why are you in Pathfinder if you don't have a kid in Pathfinder, you don't have a grandson in Pathfinder? And he said, Pathfinder for me is a very min a ministry that's very dear to my heart because he was the one who brought me to this church. I, I did know the Lord before because I was part of the Pentecostal church, but it was the one 
that when I went to Pathfinders, cemented the foundation of who my God was. Because every time I have to memorize a verse, I have to always learn something, but I have to apply three things that they taught us in Pathfinder. What did you learn about God? What did you learn about yourself? And how can you apply it today in your life? And that's what it taught me who my God was, he loves me, and he has a desire for me to prosper and to serve him and serve others in, on his glory. So when I started on PBE, for me as coaching, it was easy because I got Brandon Pat. And when I went over there, I just asked him, Brandon, what would you like me to say with you? And he said, I just need the story. Of the, of the verses. So I started with him and he just, sometimes he didn't have it and he just, I have to memorize this. I just go out of the room, leave him his space and in 10 minutes when I came back, already Brandon knew his 10 verses. And for me it was woof and we just go over it and then uh, do the story, and I ask questions. And the funny part for me was poor Brando, because I always laugh about myself about when I read the story. For me, I think God has a very sense of humor. And every time I read these stories, like Sanson, oh my goodness, you say, oh, Sanson, again, you, get, you got in trouble again when you know what you have to do. But this Sanson at the end, in this story, he finished knowing that what he needs, even with this eye out, with no strength, he knew he needed the Lord, and he got again, and he asked for his help. And that's what I want for these kids. Even in this experience, in the struggle we have in our life, at the end we know we always need the Lord in our Lord, in our hearts. So when they start learning these memory verses, I just hope it's not just memorization. I pray for them that they keep the word of the Lord in their hearts and how to apply them in their life. And they never go back. And they always go forward in Jesus' name. One of the things I saw, I always, because I cannot see, you know, but I hear everything that is happening. And these coaches, let me tell you, because I walked with Brandon for like five verses, and he continued and have more more than that, five chapters. And I see these coaches all backing up and working. You see Andrew and Claude doing the testing, and no, we have to do this. And you see, I, I saw Nicola and Leslie just doing the judges and the testing, let's go. And even they, each other, when they don't know, oh, I got this one. So you see them working in this teamwork for us to do for these kids. And the reward at the end, when David told me that they go to NID, and he, they tell them, oh, they celebrate first place. The smile of these kids, David, no, this is what I, my impression was. David said, wow, look at those smiles. They brighten up. He told me, Asha Makedia has a, a smile that you cannot, o sea, it was so bright and shining. And that's what, as coaches or counselors, we expect for our kids, that they have the joy of the Lord in their hearts and know when they learn the word of God, that is essentially a joy to serve the Lord and know him. And so pray for our pathfinders, for, for the ones that are here today, the ones that were, because they continue to have that knowledge of the Lord, and the ones that will come for us. So pray for all of them and keep them on your hearts. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. Let's Let's review the song for this month, The Homeland.
there's no night in the homeland but in the faithless morn I'm sighing for the homeland my heart is aching here there is no pain in the homeland to which I The Lord is in the homeland with angels bright and fair. There's no sin in the homeland and no temptation there. The music of the homeland is ringing. The dwellers in the homeland are beckoning me to come where neither death nor sorrow invades their holy home. Oh, dear, dear native country, Thank you, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay, so our title for our devotional today is Crossing the Jordan, Trusting in God's Miraculous Provision. In Joshua 3, 10 to 17, we witness God's power as he leads the Israelites across the Jordan River. This passage reminds us that God is faithful in fulfilling his promises and can do the impossible. Let's delve into the miraculous events described in this passage and draw lessons for our lives. Number one, preparing to cross. Joshua instructed them to consecrate themselves and trust God's guidance before the Israelites crossed the Jordan. Similarly, we must prepare our hearts and minds through prayer and obedience to God's word, trusting that he will lead us through any challenges. Two, God's promises. God assured Joshua that he would exalt him in the sight of all Israel, affirming his leadership and divine support. Just as God made promises to Joshua, he has made promises to each of us. We can trust in his faithfulness to fulfill his promises in our lives, even when circumstances seem impossible. Three, the Ark of the Covenant. The priest carried the Ark of the Covenant, symbolizing God's presence and power. As they stepped into the waters of the Jordan, the river miraculously parted, allowing the Israelites to cross on dry ground. The ark represents God's presence with us in our journey of faith. When we trust God and step out in obedience, he will make a way for us where there seems to be no way. Four, stones of remembrance. Joshua commanded the Israelites to take 12 stones from the Jordan River 
to memorialize God's miraculous provision. These stones served as a reminder to future generations of God's faithfulness and power. We too should create stones of remembrance in our lives, recalling the times when God intervened on our behalf and provided for our needs. So in conclusion, as we reflect on the miracle of the Jordan River crossing, let us be encouraged to trust in God's promises. Prepare our hearts for his guidance and remember his faithfulness in our lives. God lead us through our challenges and obstacles just as he led Israelites across the Jordan. May we always rely on his strength and provision, knowing that with God, all things are possible. We'll now turn over to Brother Caesar as he review our lesson and the topic, the impending conflict. Continue to have a blessed Sabbath. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. It's good to see everyone again. It's been a while. How's everyone doing? Good? Had a great week? Yes? Happy to rest today? <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Let us uh, bow our heads to open up a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We thank you for all that you provide for us, and thank you for getting us here safely to worship you, Lord. We pray that you bless us with your spirit to guide us in our conversations this morning as we review this week's lesson. We ask for your help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So what was this week's lesson about? Anyone? Huh? America and Rome. America and what? America and Rome. In Rome? America and Rome. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. America and Rome. Rome. Uh, what else? What else would you get from this week's lesson? Anyone? What did you get from this week's lesson? I think for me it was two questions. What is worship? and how to keep the Sabbath holy. I think those are the questions that I was looking forward that maybe we could really address. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Anyone? No? <laughs> All right. I'm just trying to get everybody woken up here so that we can get ready. So the, this week's lesson is called The Impending Conflict, right? We all know as Seventh-day Adventists what's ahead of us. Right? And the reason why I'm asking um, what we got out of this is because there's so much information in this week's lesson. And I think for the most part, we know this lesson really well, right? But what good does it do if we know these things? What is the purpose of this lesson? Is it just for us to review and that's it? Keep us refreshed just so that we can have knowledge? Or what do we do with this information? So we can share it. So we can share it, right? What did Jesus say? Go out and make disciples, right? So we are here to review, but so that we can go and spread this message. So what is this message that we, uh, that we read this week about this impending conflict? I mean, we've already mentioned, has to do with the US, has to do with Rome, has to do with worship, 
has to do with creation. I'm going to read the, the Sabbath's lessons, uh, uh, what it says here, because I think this is very important. It says, there is a relatively new medical device called a biochip, or a verichip, about the size of a grain of rice that can be implement, implanted in a patient. The biochip contains information about the patient's medical history, which can then be obtained by passing or external scanner across the area where the biochip or verichip has been inserted. Now, this is what is interesting. Some Christians see this as part of a conspiracy to enforce the mark of the beast. For others, the mark of the beast has to do with barcodes on can, can of food. Or it is a mysterious number on dollar bills that supposedly adds up to 666. For some, it has to do with Masonic order, the Illuminati, Black UN, helicopters, or the United Nations. Now, this, yes? The real theme of, the, of this lesson is who, who or what mm -hmm. do we worship? Yeah. I mean, the whole basis, do we worship Rome? Do we worship the devil? Do we worship Christ? Yeah. This is the underlying theme of the whole lesson. Yeah, yeah. and again, we, we understand this, right? But there's a world that is dying out there, right? I mean, it's gone crazy, right? It's crazy that there's conspiracy theories about everything, right? Especially with social media. I mean, it's real easy for somebody to have a certain view, and if he explains it, his view really well, he's got 50,000 followers, right? Doesn't need to have a church anymore. That is his church. You know what I mean? He has 50,000 followers. Whatever he says or she says, they believe, right? So we got a lot of false prophets out there, right? So if we see and we understand this, then we understand what the, the, the Bible is very simple to understand, right? God says that it's very simple for us to understand. We just make it difficult. So this week's lesson, it says, is to reveal, the aim of this week's lesson is to reveal the coming, the coming conflict over worship. And that's the main focus, right? It's super simple. We believe it's super simple to understand. Right? But there's a world out there that doesn't understand this. Right? So Saint will challenge God's authority by attempting to undermine God's law. Specifically, the Sabbath will become the center of a global conflict over worship. Now, we see right now, what do we see right now around the world? Conflict. Right? There's conflict everywhere. Right? One of them is territorial, right? what we see out there in Russia and Ukraine. And the other one is what? Religious, right? And so you see these conflicts going on. It's, for us, it's hard to believe that these things, although we say we believe it, do you really believe it? That one day, things will change and become so horrific, even here in the United States. Because we're seeing glimpses of it, yes? If you look at uh, what's going on today, from my perspective, mm -hmm. okay, is that this conflict that's around the world and all the money that's being poured mm -hmm. into this, what I see is that what's happening in America, mm -hmm. I'm in the trucking industry, mm -hmm. and I see people that's coming into the oil field mm -hmm. that never would even imagine being there yeah. because they have no choice mm -hmm. they can't make it on the road so they think they're going to come in here yeah. but they're coming in with all this debt that they've had and they this is something that's normal for them mm -hmm. you know that they bought new trucks and they did all these things yeah. but it's not they're not making the money yeah. they're, they're scrambling they're ru running themselves into the a hole mm -hmm. and they don't realize that they can't dig themselves out of it yeah and it's getting worse and worse, and the, the, the stress that I see is just unbelievable. Yeah, it, it, when you're desperate, it makes you make some, some, uh, some choices, right? Yes, Helen. Uh, you said earlier that uh, there's a lot of false prophets out mm -hmm. there. And there's, and brother here said that, uh, in his perspective, there is a lot of things going on around the world. Mm -hmm. Are we thinking, as Seventh-day Adventists, that this conflict 
impending conflict is outside of our church. You know what? I believe that this conflict is not, yeah, it is global because church, God's church, God's people is global, but I think the conflict is within our church. It is within our church. So we have to study for ourselves what is Satan doing in our church, corporately and individually. Yeah. All right. So um, it's important to understand these things, right? It's important, to, and, you, and you're right. There's, there's going to be internal. It's out. It's everywhere. Okay. But we want to stay focused on the message, right? I can't convince all of you guys to act as, according to what God says. You know what I mean? I have to go to where people want to listen. There's people out there that are searching for truth, right? Searching for truth, and if I spend all my time trying to preach to you every Sabbath, when there's people out there that want to hear this truth, and I see that people are out there looking for truths, and they're finding truths that are errors, that hurts me, right? That hurts. Because I can be here all day long preaching to you, but you already know these things. You should know these things. But there's people that are out there desperately looking for truths, and they're finding junk. Junk. And you know what? It's our fault. It's our fault. So that's why we should know. These things we know. We know. The devil and his minions are out there using social media, using all the technology, and here we are not using anything, preaching to ourselves. This is why it's so important. This impending conflict is not only for us. This is going to happen to us. But you know what? If we don't start speaking out, what's going to happen? Of course this is going to be fulfilled because we're sleeping. We're just here to ourselves. The more we tell people, the more of a chance we have of it being a little bit more easier to take because you're going to have more people that join God's army that are going to join his, his, his will, right, to obey God, right? We want more people. Remember, Satan is trying to take away all of God's people. And you know what? Just because they're not Seventh-day Adventists, that doesn't mean that it's not God's people. God loves everybody, right? So this is why it's, folk, it's important to focus on what this message is. It says, there will be collisions of beliefs over the true and the false day of worship. I know you experience this day. If you're talking to your coworkers, whoever it is, your friends, your neighbors, right? God's final appeal is an appeal to faithfulness to Christ despite persecution and economic boycott, imprisonment, and debt decree. Now, when you read those lists, do you really believe that? The only way you're going to you're going to fall into that category is if people know it, right? And if we're, and if we're not speaking out, guess what? You're safe, at least for the meantime until they come knocking on your door and say, hey. Yes, I can relate very much, you know, with, uh, especially with, the, with, uh, with we know how the gospel was supposed to be preached by Israel, right? Mm -hmm. By the children of Israel. What did they do? They kept it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they were bypassed. It mm -hmm. went to the Gentiles, right? Mm -hmm. They were supposed to be the depositaries. They were supposed to be the, the, the source of the truth, but mm -hmm. they did not, they were not appropriate, you know, in mm -hmm. their dealing with uh, the truth. Mm -hmm. Question, is it only about just talking and shouting in the microphones, you know, and preaching in words? Because words can be just empty, you know? Let us bring it closer to home. It is all about how we live our lives. Mm -hmm. Because if we are, say for example, bring it closer to home. If we are going to, to magnify the Sabbath on this, which is the contention in the end, will we be able to represent the Sabbath of the Lord? If right now in a relatively easier state of our life, we are also not settled you know, in keeping the Sabbath. 
we only keep the Sabbath. This is just an example, the Sabbath. We keep the Sabbath only by convenience. But if we have to work, if it's our time to do the weekend, we work too, you know? Things like that. I mean, we're not pointing fingers at anyone, but again, how can we represent God's character if we ourselves in our daily life we can, we could not represent him so it's not only about preaching right there that's why we are being sent you know to different places in our workplaces monday fr monday to friday that way we will be able to represent God's character there you know to the entire world because there is like what you said a dying world out there and we have a message to say now question again can we deliver a message in a different tone in a unique tone you know if we are if we are not completely standing you know in the in the law of god it has to be sounded a certain sound yeah. and we cannot do that if we are only halfway there yeah uh sister over here wants to she has, yeah and and to add to that um that's why and this is just the way I look at things. When you go out and say something, guess what? You're, you're holding yourself accountable, right? Because people are really quick to judge you and really quick to say, hey, but didn't you say, right? So it kind of puts you in a situation where you have to, you know, follow by example, right? Lead by example, yes. And I also feel that this message is a personal message mm -hmm. because I cannot take anything anywhere unless this message has meaning to me. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't have any meaning to me, if it has no impact, I won't be willing to share it, and I won't know what to share. So yeah. I do believe that it is a personal um, message. Yes. And um, I'll make another. That's right. Uh, you cannot ba basically share what you do not have or what you do not well, love. Yeah, I mean, you could probably say something, but it won't be passionate, right? It won't be with heart. It won't mean anything. Uh, yes, brother. Well, it's like uh, taking the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I, I make it a point to let them know it's not about just rest. Mm -hmm. It's about my spiritual uh, time with other fellow worshipers on the Sabbath. Yeah. That this revives my body and my spirit and everything. And then I can go on through another week. That's right. It does. Uh, you know, when you're out there working the fields, right, throughout the week, you're working the fields and you're out there ministering and you're sharing and you do, guess what? By the time the Sabbath comes, you should be beat up. You should be beat up. You should be exhausted because you've been battling and you've been out there uh, sharing the gospel and you've been, you know, back and forth and, and you, you, you're going to have all these uh, emotional highs because, you know, you, you really want to reach out to this person because you care about this person. I mean, you're constantly out there in the battlefield. So the Sabbath rest, when you, like you said, you're coming to worship with your fellow brothers and sisters that are all in agreement with what you believe, then guess what? This is truly a place of rest. Because you're not out there battling. I shouldn't be battling here. This is just a place for me to, to rest with my brothers and sisters. Let's worship God together, right? And then Sunday comes along, boom, back in the battlefield, right? That's what resting in God is. Being able to come together and say, all right, whoo, that was a week. Now let me come and worship and praise God by singing and, and hearing the word of God with my brothers and sisters. That's true rest, right? Yes. Are you, are you telling us that there is no battle within our church? There shouldn't be. There is. I of believe course there, there is. is. But you know what? Like I said, if I'm busy somewhere else, I'm not going to be too focused. You, you, I, I'm going to preach and I'm going to teach and I'm going to share and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with my brothers and sisters. Right? Hoping that something that comes out of my mouth is going to encourage you and say, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to, not supposed to be doing that. Right? But my, the battle for me out there, there's people that are out there desperately seeking for truth. So when I come here, I just sing and praise the Lord with happiness and joy. Yes. Yeah, but we have to start with us here in the church. Yes. Because they got people right here in the church yes. that comes to church yes. and then goes to work in the afternoon. Yes. You're right. Right. And, and you're 100% right. That's what I'm saying. So if we're talking about the Sabbath today, which is what we're doing, right? 
Some, something that comes out of here no, this morning should impress you to say, hey, wait a minute, I didn't know I was supposed to not be doing that, right? Let us also remember that salvation was also focused, you know, primarily in Israel. Mm -hmm. what, did the, what did Jesus say? Go first unto the lost sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. Because if we are going to bypass that, if we're going to neglect the inreach and we're just going to reach out, that is an imbalance right there. You know, um, it is primarily what's important is that we represent Christ. Mm -hmm. That is why the admonition, the Bible and the spirit of prophecy is not primarily for the outsiders. It's primarily for the people of of God, that are professed people of God. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Why are we being judged? Why are we being sanctified? Why do we not want to hear sanctification messages? Because God wants us to be cohesive in the truth. That way, when we sound the alarm, it is distinctive. We are not splintering in our representation because Sister Sophia is representing the Sabbath a different way and Sister so-and-so is representing the Sabbath a different way. That is why we have to go amongst ourselves because we need to reach the, the lost sheep in Israel before we can reach out. And that is not judging because you know what? We are caring for each other and we are magnifying God's character. We are preparing it. When we get it right as a church, we represent to the world more productively and more impactfully that it will deliver a solid message, not a splintered half message. You're right. And this is what the Sabbath, we're here. That's right. right? We share. That's what we're doing. We're sharing, right? We're reasoning. We're sharing. That's good. But what about the other six days? That's right. That you don't see me. What about the other days? Guess what? Your focus is now out there. It's okay. We can come and preach and teach and, and discuss all kinds of stuff, all the, 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 the things that we have issues with within our church. That's fine. But don't forget the other six days. Don't forget about the other people that are out there. The when you're... Yes. Oh, go ahead. Is there somebody else? Yeah. So um, no disrespect to all of what has been said, but I think we should get back to what is the impending conflict. Yeah. Yes. It's an impending conflict, right? Jesus' strength takes us through Earth's final conflict. Okay? Revelation 14, 7 through 9. What does it say? Can somebody read that? Mm -hmm. Say it with a loud voice. <laughs> Saying with a loud voice, uh -huh. fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. And another angel followed saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand. I think we should go to 10. Yep. He himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Amen. And before I give up the, yes. the mic, this little part here, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone is giving some persons some issues because they believe that they'll be burning, burning, burning forever in hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Need to be cleared up. Yes, yes, when you're sharing this, right? A lot of people have like, what about this, right? But we know, we know, right? This is review. What about chapter four, verses 11? What does it say there? What does God say? Yeah, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Receive glory and honor and power, and thy pleasure they are, and, oh, wait a minute. For their power, for their pleasure, 
They are and are created. Amen. So God is worthy, right, to receive all the glory and all the honor and all the power. Why? Because he created everything, right? What did the devil create? Nothing. Just chaos. <laughs> Problems, right? But he's not a creator. He can't create. God is the creator. That's why he deserves all the honor, all the, all, everything, right? All the glory, all the power. Um, and, and that's something we should focus on, right? Focusing on worshiping God. And I think for the most part, the world wants to worship God. But we know there's an enemy out there deceiving them, right? They're, de they're being deceived. So this is one reason the devil hates the Sabbath so much, right? Because it has to do with creation. It has to do with God's authority of who he is. It's his seal or his mark, right? It, it, it lets people know who is the true God to worship, right? And Satan hates that. Revelation 12, 17, what does it say? Revelation 12, 17. I have it. Okay. So the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went off to wage war on the rest of her, ch her children, those who keep and obey the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Amen. And uh, Revelation 14, 12. Oh, we just read that. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Amen. All right. So just by this description here that we just read, who is it that Satan goes after? The people, the people of God. The people of God. The so guess what? If Satan ain't going after you, what, is that? what, what does that mean? Yes. The professed people of God. You know, and if we look at it, I, the Christendom has God. They have, we have the same Bible. But if you narrow it, I'm not saying this arrogantly to offend anyone that's watching us, but uh, I do believe, you know, that Adventism, you know, is a remnant church. And we know, and Adventism, you know, is the most adept, you know, in terms of, of understanding of the scriptures. And so if you narrow it down, it says those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So which means that there's a lot in Christendom, you know, that is not necessarily worshiping correctly. And that is why um, this message goes to the remnant church mm -hmm. first and then should be to them. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. We, the Bible says that we already know what's going to happen to those, I'm just rephrasing, to those that are not following the commandments of God. And if you relate it to Matthew 24, even the very elect. Mm -hmm. So it's primarily, if you narrow it down, if you deduce it, it's the Seventh-day Adventist church that is being under attack. Yeah. I have a point. Yes. I want to say, though, we're not going to be saved as a church. That's right. Yeah. We're going to be saved as individuals. Yeah. So what message are we taking? What yeah. is the message I'm taking? Mm -hmm. You know, um, we, yes, we, you have to believe. Mm -hmm. You have to believe that Christ is coming and that's Adventism. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I don't know that I'd say, I'm going to say, you know, it's, it's a, a seven day Adventist, you know, because we're not going to be saved as a church. Mm -hmm. And if we don't know this message for ourselves, mm -hmm. if I don't, because when I read this this week, mm -hmm. what I got, I mean, it gives me hope. So mm -hmm. the message that came out of this lesson this week for me was a message of hope. Yeah. It's a message of hope for myself. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's what I thought of. And I felt hopeful that I can be saved. Yeah. And it also pointed me to things that are going to happen because the fight and the war and the impending doom that's coming or the conflict that's coming, mm -hmm. I know it's going to be on a more global scale, yes, because every single person is gonna get a knowledge of the truth mm -hmm. and will have to make that decision. But for me personally, it, it said to me that I can be hopeful when I mm -hmm. see these things happening because I don't know if we feel like the attack is only to come, it's only in the future, then mm -hmm. 
to me, that just means, okay, well, when does it start? If we're always looking for it in the future, I feel, I can feel that I'm, I'm being attacked in one way or another. And yeah. one way Maybe. of attack is not somebody coming and dragging me out of my house and taking me to yeah. prison. Because my belief, yeah. I, can, I can be attacked right here in the house of God because somebody believes something different, yeah. right? Or it could be that I have an erroneous belief. I could believe, the, like when Leslie talked about, you know, the burning fire and brings brimstone. If I'm here and I believe that, okay, I'm, gonna, we're, I'm just going to be burning forever and ever and a, that's a wrong belief. And those are some of the ways that Satan attacks us. He's not waiting to attack us in the future only. The attack is already here. Yeah. So, you know, hence it is important for even us as a church, Caesar, to be here to study the Word of God so that we can all be on the same page as um, Dodie was alluding to. Because it's, it's that united front, but also iron sharpeneth iron. And unless we're studying together, unless we're discussing it together, we're just not, I said this last week, we're not going to be saved as a church and we're, we're just not doing as God desires for us to do if we're not taking care of the household of faith as well. Yeah. Look, the, this is what I teach my kids. I've taught them since they were young, right and wrong, right? Now they're teenagers. They, they're, I've taught them since they were little, hey, when you get older and you make choices, you're going to suffer the consequences, not me. That doesn't mean that I don't love them. It's just that I've been teaching them and teaching them, and now they have to experience it for themselves. Hopefully they don't make big, big mistakes, but if they're, they're going to make mistakes. You know what I mean? I will be there for them, but they will have to suffer the consequences, right? Not me. It's the same thing here. Look, I could teach you and preach and, and, and share with you the, the gospel and share with you this lesson, but you know what? It's your life. I know where I want to go. You know what I mean? I love you guys. And that's why we're, I'm, doing up, I'm up here sharing the lesson with you guys. Staying focused on, on, on what the battle is. What, what is, the, what is this, what's the importance of understanding the Sabbath? If you don't know, then seek it. Search it. Because it's really going to come down to the Sabbath. If you don't know how to keep the Sabbath holy, guess what? It's going it's to make a decision for you. When, when the, the, the laws change and they enforce the Sunday law instead of the keeping the Sabbath, guess what? You're going to have to make choices. And if you haven't been keeping the Sabbath right, then it's going to be easy for you to say, well, God will understand if I choose this. Right? It's dangerous. Right? This is what the lesson is trying to tell us. It's dangerous because we will make compromises. Yes. I think let us understand when you talk of the church, the fact that we are here does not, belong, does not mean that we belong to this church. Mm -hmm. um, Revelation 12, verse 17, it says, Then the dragon was enraged with the woman mm -hmm. and went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Simply, I wish you could understand this, that it is the woman and her offspring mm -hmm. The church has one Lord, one baptism. I mean, our doctrine is one. Yes. And I think we need to understand what, um, how to keep the Sabbath. What is worship? Because we may be here, but what is worship? Are we worshiping God? How do we keep the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. Do we keep the Sabbath just because we are here? I think once we understand the principles and the basics, we don't have to have any conflict. And um, in my thinking, the devil is attacking the church. Mm -hmm. Of course. And the it's church are read, those right? who have the testimony mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That when the devil sees you, he sees Christ. Maybe you have not reached there. But then thank God that you have the opportunity to get there. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, this lesson is an invitation for us to become whom God wants us to be. Amen. We, need, we don't need to look at the, out there and say they. I think we need to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, are we there yet? If we are not there yet, God has given us this day that we may come and learn of him and then grow in his grace to become whom he has called us to be. So that as we reflect him, and we don't need to fear the devil, when he attacks us, you know, there is a good drama in this, whereby when the devil tried to spew and like create a flood, God opened the earth. You know, God will protect us. So the question is, are we where God has called us to be? We don't have to think about the devil, what he's doing. 
if we focus on God, then the devil is God's business. Yeah, and, and I heard a lot of we's in there, and, and I agree, but you know what? I have to work on myself, right? And then when I work on myself and I, and I, and I, I worship and I seek God, I'm going to try to obey him every way possible and then lead by example, right? That's all I can do because I can't bring you guys with me. I can't take you guys with me. I can't do any of that. Look at, look at the discussions we've had this morning. We're just going around in circles, right? Instead of focusing on the message, we're going around in circles. And that's what's going to keep going and keep going and keep going. The devil's saying, hey, look, keep doing this. Don't focus on nobody else. Yes, we have a responsibility to share with each other. But I, look, you guys have been Adventists longer than I have. Longer than I have, right? And it's still, it's, it's the same thing. Let's focus. Focus on the message. Yeah. That's been said. Yeah. What is the message of this lesson? Because we may go, you know, all over. But what is the message? Let us learn what was the message that God intended us to be. Because we'll be running all over, mm -hmm. and then we'll miss the point of the impending conflict. It is That's not right. here yet already. Mm -hmm. It is um, opening up. Mm -hmm. But where, where are we heading to? I think we need to focus on that message so at least we don't get all over. Yes. Worshiping the Creator through keeping the commandments of God stands in direct opposition to worshiping the beast. If you do not want to worship the beast, Worship God. Obey his commandments. If you don't know what those commandments is, search them and seek them. Find the answers. Right? God will give you the answers. None of you taught me about the Sabbath. God taught me about the Sabbath by seeking him. Right? Search and seek. Because what is the, the memory verse? John 17, 17. Somebody read that. Sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Here it is. Simple. Seek it. Find it. It's right there. Yes, make it quick because we're running out of time. I'm trying to get we're through. running out of time already. Okay, let me just share that our lesson is preparing us for this impending conflict. Yes. And uh, the, the lesson also tells us how. Mm -hmm. In uh, Revelation 12, 17, it says uh, that the dragon is wrought. Yes. With the seeds of the woman who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony. So what is the testimony of Jesus Christ? I will be sharing to you two uh, verses okay. right now. What is the testimony of Jesus Christ? Okay. Revelation 19.10 it says that the, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. What is the spirit of prophecy? The spirit of prophecy is given to us through Ellen G. White. Okay. And we have to study those, read those, and study for ourselves. And we have to believe it. Okay. Uh, Revelation 14, 12 says, Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. What is the faith of Jesus? Let me share to you uh, selected messages. Uh, <clears throat> hold on. Selected, message, selected messages, volume 3, page 172, verse 3. It says the faith of Jesus is talked of, but not understood. What constitutes the faith of Jesus that belongs to the third angel's message? We, or we already read that. Jesus becoming our sin bearer, that he might become our sin pardoning savior. Amen. He was treated as we deserve to be treated. He came to our world and talk, took our sins that we might take his righteousness. And faith in the ability of Christ to save us amply and fully and entirely is the faith of Jesus. Amen. We have to believe that. We have to have the faith of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, while the observance of the false Sabbath in compliance with the law of the state, contrary to the fourth commandment, will be an avowal of allegiance to a power that is in opposition to God, the keeping of the true Sabbath in obedience to God's law is an evidence of loyalty to the Creator. Right? And this is what Sister White wrote, right? So we know these things. Why is it that these laws are going to pass? It's just a question for you guys to kind of answer yourself. So what are the coming crises? It says the mark of the beast prophecy in Revelation 13 tells us about the fiercest and the very worst stage of Satan's war against God. 
Ever since Jesus died on the cross, the enemy has known he was defeated, but he is determined to take as many as possible down with him, right? His first strategy in this campaign is deception, okay? This is a big word because if, we're, if we think we're safe in any way that we're thinking, we always got to come to God and say, Lord, is this true or is this error? Help me find it. Help me to understand these things, right? I don't want to fall into deception. When deception does not work, he resorts to force. And now we're talking globally, right? We're talking about this impending crisis. It will be done by force. He is ultimately behind the decree that anyone who refuses to worship the beast or receive his mark will be put to death. Religious persecution, of course, is not new, and we see this throughout right now. We see it right now. There's perse religious persecution going on, right? This is just glimpses. It's not new. It has been around for ever since Cain killed Abel for obeying God's command. Jesus said it would happen even among believers, okay? Throughout Christian history, persecution was common. It happened in pagan Rome, but was especially evident in the vicious persecution of Bible-believing Christians by the medieval church. The mark of the beast is the final link in the hellish chain. Like past persecutions, it is designed to force everyone to conform to a certain set of beliefs and approved systems of worship. The prophecy indicates that persecution will start with economic sanctions. And this is important to understand because I think for the most part, if anybody's breaking the Sabbath, it's usually for that reason because, well, I have to pay the bills, or I have to feed my children, or I have to provide for my household. Whatever your excuse is, working on the Sabbath is a no, right? So we should all, we should all understand. So if you're, not, if you're already compromising in that area, Guess what's going to happen? It's going to be real easy when economic sanctions come upon. You're going to say, well, I'm already doing it anyways. But guess what? Even Seventh-day Adventists, hopefully not many, but I'm pretty sure even some of us, because they're scared to die or they're scared to stand up for their faith, they might switch sides. They don't want to die. Yeah, but the, that's where you we're talking about right there is the fact that if we don't stand up as an individual and say I'm sorry but I can't work on exactly. the Sabbath I'm sorry I'm not gonna violate this because this yeah. goes against God's Word yeah. we have to start doing that now in our lives yeah. if we're gonna ever be able to take you will the not survive major one. you will not survive when the time comes you know let me I know you <laughs> Piggyback quickly. All right, you guys got to make them quick, guys. Okay, piggyback. Quick, quick, quick. Because sister, you know what? Or, it's not going to be a blatant Sabbath. Do not worship on Saturday. Brothers and sisters, let's get this. Satan is more shrewd than that. He's not going to say, don't worship Saturday, worship only Sunday. No. We already know we, there is a precipice right now that's about to break. What do we see right now? Climate change. All those things. We have to have a one day, you know, of rest. During COVID, they, they saw, you know, that the ozone got thickened again because there was not a whole lot of activities. In Europe, there has to be one day, you know, that needs to be allocated for the rest. The vehicles are not functioning. The vehicles are not being used and everyone is just cohesive with each other. Ozone was restored. It got thickened again. It's not all about don't worship on a Sabbath. It's going to be an allocation of that specific day where nothing, where everyone is going to celebrate family. Everyone is going to rest and it's for the good, uh, the, what is that? The, what's the term? The common, common good. And that no one can refute that because who are you going to refute that? Because it's not only good for you, it's good for humanity and for saving Mother Nature. So it is in a form of geopolitical religious purpose. It's not only Sabbath Saturday. It's, exactly. it's a general thing that even Adventists will say, why are you going to contradict this? Because it is good for us. It's just like the vaccine also. It's good for us, but it negated the health reform. So things like that. Yes. And it is, it is not just about working on Sabbath that is a yeah, violation of the yeah. Sabbath. Because some of us stay home and we still violate the Sabbath. So 
talking about keeping the Sabbath, how do we keep the Sabbath? That's something that we need to, to, to teach as yeah. well. So it's not just work go, me going to the hospital on, 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 on Saturday. The, I agree, the Bible says that we should not work on the Sabbath, but it's not just working, it's other things too. We violate the Sabbath in so many yeah. other ways, even within the church. Yeah. We can come to church and still violate it. Yeah, so, and I'm just going off what the lesson is, is trying to focus on, guys, okay? There's an impending conflict, right? We're talking about worldwide sanctions, okay? Worldwide sanctions. No one can buy or sell unless they have the mark. Anyone who refuses to receive the mark will eventually be placed under a death decree. Now, yes, eventually it, it might begin softly, but the more that the devil tries to imply and, and, and implicate these things, the more we stand firm, then the devil gets frustrated. We just read. The devil gets frustrated because these people, the Sabbath keepers, are not following, so eventually he's going to force us. Okay? So eventually it'll get there. But these are just little trials. Okay? So let's identify the beast. This is very important. This is the main purpose of this lesson. All right? So let's get through this really quickly. Revelation 13 13, 1 through 2 says, what does the beast rise from? The book of Revelation identifies the dragon primarily as Satan. Revelation 12, 3 to 5 says the dragon attempted to destroy as soon as it was born the male child who was later caught up to God and his throne. It was the devil working through pagan Rome who tried to destroy Christ. The arch enemy of God and humanity works through political and religious institutions to accomplish his purpose. About this beast power, we're told, the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. This prophecy was precisely fulfilled hundreds of years later when the Roman Emperor Constantine moved his capital from Rome to what became to be called Can uh, Constantinople in modern-day Turkey. This left a power vacuum at the former throne of the seat of Caesar, the imperial city of Rome. Thus, pagan Rome gave the beast its seat or capital city. Isaac, Isaac Back is stated by removing the seat, and this is a statement, by removing the seat of the empire to Constant, Constantine Nopli, Constantine made way for the Bishop of Rome to exalt himself above all men upon earth and above the God of heaven. Okay? Um, where are we at? A careful analysis reveals that the sea of the beast in Revelation 13 is the apostate religious power to rise out of Rome and become a worldwide system of worship. Now, you know, just recently, uh, the Pope, where did he go? He just had a meeting with G7, right? First started with the government, now he's going worldwide, G7, right? So you see these things falling into place, which is fine because this is the way it's going to happen. We can't change that, right? So rather than worshiping the beast, God's people find their greatest joy and highest delight in worshiping God. Their obedience springs from their heart of love. They are committed to him because they know how committed he is to them. Right? God is committed to you, to everybody. The quicker you realize it, the more you're going you're gonna to love him and worship him. And guess what? When he says do something, you're going to do it wholeheartedly. Right? And that's including the Sabbath. All right, so recall from lesson four that God gives us a key for understanding prophetic time, and this is just a review, right? So the beast from the earth, the first beast rolls out of the sea, the second beast comes out, out of earth, the sea represents peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, the earth then represents a sparsely populated area, uh, the second beast arises near the close of the prophetic period during the first beast exercise authority, that is, the rises to prominence around 1798. The United States precisely first fits this description. It declared its independence in 1776, adopted the Constitution in 1789, and was recognized as a world power by the late 19th century. John continues, he says, he had two horns like the lamb and spoke like a dragon, Revelation 13, 11. Horns in Bible prophecy symbolize power. Unlike the first beast, this beast has no crowns on its horn, suggesting it is not a monarchy. The two horns represent the two primary governing principles that are the source of the United States' power and success. It's political and religious liberties, right? And we can see that now it's being challenged. What change do you see in the beast and how does it speak? This gentle lamb-like nation, which is the United States, ultimately speaks like a dragon. It exercises all the authority of the first beast, Revelation 13, 12. 
and abandons its principles of religious liberties, causing the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, Revelation 13, 12. The United States will lead out in requiring everyone on earth to worship the first beast by recognizing the papacy spiritual and secular authority. According to this prophecy, the United States forms an image to the beast, a union of church and state, and it will require everyone to worship this image. What a fascinating, what, what's fascinating is that at the time when, when first identified as this beast power, the United States was nowhere near the military and economic behemoth it has become and remains now. So think about the political instability in America today. How might that one day lead to fulfillment of this prophecy? Now, again, this is just review. It's the Sabbath, right? Closing with this, it's the Sabbath. If you don't know about the Sabbath, search it, okay? Find out how you keep the Sabbath because the last thing you wanna do is, is be weak in that area and other areas too, but it's important. It's gonna sneak up on everybody. I promise you, if you're not already seeking now, it's going to sneak up on you. Next thing you know, things are going to change. Just like I use this as an example because I don't think anybody saw the, the pandemic happen. It just spread like wildfire, right? Within a week. You see it over there across the other side of the world and all of a sudden, boom, just hit us. That's just a sneak peek of what's going to happen. Yes, it's going to start off gentle or, or trying to impose these things about Sunday law and everything, but I, I don't know how long, but I guarantee you when, when they start trying to make these changes and the firmer we stand with the Sabbath and with God, guess what's going to happen? Things are going to change rapidly. And if you're not firm and you're not understanding the Sabbath, how to keep the Sabbath, you're going to compromise. Do not compromise. Right? And that's an anything because it has to do with the commandments of God as well. Brother, Spirit of Prophecy, Sister White, this is for all of us Seventh-day Adventists, beloved Seventh-day Adventists. Sister White said that because of the compromise that we as a church is doing right now, we will not find it difficult to receive the mark of the beast. And she talks about Adventism in two counts food and raiment. So if we are not, if we, with our compromises right now, she even said that majority of the Seventh-day Adventists will receive the mark of the beast. And it is in line with Matthew 24. Majority will be lost. This is not like a scare warning. This is again like what Sister Sophia says, a hope, a great hope for us that if we take this solemn warning of love, we can be completely prepared. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning. We thank you for gathering us here this morning to worship you. We pray, Lord, that you fill us with your spirit. Give us love and hope, Lord, so that we can worship you wholeheartedly and we can be obedient to your will. We ask this because we need desperately your help. We need you so desperately, Lord. And we have so many concerns, Lord. I don't want to see any of our brothers and sisters lost. I don't want to be lost. But we all struggle. We all have issues, Lord, and we pray that you help us to focus on your message, focus on what we need to do, whether it's here in the church or whether it's out there, Lord, help us to be faithful in both ways and all ways. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen.
The Song of Deborah, Judges 5, one, chap, verse 1 to 31. Then Deborah and Barak, son of Abinoam, sang on that day, saying, When leaders lead in Israel, when the people willingly offer themselves, bless the Lord. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes, I, even I, will sing praise to the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched to the battlefield of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens poured. The clouds also poured water. In the days of Shagmon, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were deserted and the travelers walked along the byways. Village life ceased. It ceased in Israel until I, Deborah, arose, arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods, then there was war along the gates. Not a shield or spear was seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is with the rulers of Israel, who offered themselves willingly with the people. Speak you who ride on white donkeys, who sit in judges' attire, and who walk along the roads. Far, far from the noise of the archers, among the watering places, there, there they shall recount the righteous acts of the Lord, the righteous acts which he has done for, the, for his villagers in Israel. Mm. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, sing a song. Arise, Barak, and lead your captives away, O son of Obinoam. Then the survivors went down to the gates, the people against the noble. The Lord came down for me against the mighty. From Ephraim were those whose roots were in Amalek from after you, Benjamin, with your peoples. From Mashir, the rulers came down, and from Zeblin were those who bear the recruiter's staff. And, and the princes of Issachar were with Deborah. As Issachar, so was Barak, sent into the valley under command. Among the divisions of Reuben, there were great resolves of heart. Why did you sit among the sheepfolds to hear the pippings of the flocks? The divisions of Reuben have great searchings of heart. Gilead, went, Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. Why did Dan remain on ships? Asher continued by the shore and stayed by his inlets. Zedlin is a people who jeopardize their lives to the point of death on the battlefield. The kings came and fought. The kings of Canaan came and fought. They took no spoils of silver. They fought with the heavens, the stars along their courses, fought against the Surah. The turn of Kishon swept them away. The, 
the ancient turret, the turret of Kishon, O my soul, march on in strength. The horses, the horses' hooves galloped, the galloping, galloping of his steeds. Curse Miraz, said the angel of the Lord, curse its inhabitants bitterly, for they did not come to the help of the Lord, the help of the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed among women is Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. Most blessed is she among women in tents. He asked for water, she gave him milk. She brought out cream in a lordly bowl. She stretched her hand to the tent peg, her right hand to the workman's hammer. She pounded Sisera, she pierced his head. She split and struck through his temple. At her feet he sank, he fell. Where he fell, there he lay still. At her feet he sank, he fell. Where he fell, there he lay dead. The mother of Sisera looked through the window and cried out through the lattice, why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarries the clatter of his chariot? To the wisest, her wisest ladies answered her. Yes, she answered herself. Are they not finding and dividing the spoil? To, to every man a girl or two, for Sisera plunder of dyed garments, plunder of garments embroidered and dyed. Thus let all your enemies perish, O Lord, but let those who love you be like the sun when it comes out in full strength. So, thus the land had rest for 40 years. Hello, everybody. Happy Sabbath to all. We are glad that you could come and join with us this Sabbath morning. Uh, we are so glad because we have a lot of visitors uh, from here and afar, especially from Labak um, and Philippines and, uh, yes, all over. Uh, we have, uh, I think we, have, we are good now to go.
let's all rise up for it. Let's sing the Lord is in his holy temple. Let's pray. Lord, we come to your presence this morning just as we are, frail and sinful human beings with all our weaknesses. And yet we know that when we call on you, our sins will be forgiven and they shall be white as snow. Although they are red as scarlet, we know they could be white as wool. So be with us today, Lord, that in our songs and in our prayers, in our study of your word, we could always sing majesty, honor to be in your name. In his name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the Pathfinder Pledge. By the grace of God, I will be pure, kind, and true. I will keep the Pathfinder law. I will be a servant of God and a friend to man. Raise your right hand for the Pathfinder law. The Pathfinder Law is for me to keep the morning watch, do my honest part, care for my body, keep a level eye, be courteous and obedient, walk softly in the sanctuary, keep a song in my heart, and go on God's errands. The Pathfinder Song. We'll show uh, our PB of you.
Happy Sabbath Church once again. Happy Sabbath Church. All right. So obviously today is Pathfinder Sabbath, and we are spearheading our very own Lightbearers Team Conquest, who have won first place in the recently concluded uh, PBE 2024 for Joshua and Judges. Now PBE is the official North American Division Pathfinder Bible Study Program. Pathfinders from across North America are committing to memory verses, Ever seen chapters, a military and books of the Bible lens that'll knock as your part of the PBE. Off. You're about to. Dude, PBE you hear is about a wonderful starting point for the Bible study and the life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. The Pathfinder Bible experience was developed to help Pathfinders and young people meditate and reflect on what the Bible says and how it applies to their lives. It features ideas for application to help Pathfinders use what they study and apply it to their daily experience at home, school, and church. This resource has the potential to re revolutionize a Pathfinder's life. Help them take advantage of it, use it, go beyond reading and memorizing, go deeper. Get into the application and be ready to experience what difference God can make in them and through them. Show Pathfinders that they don't just need to memorize the scripture, they can also live it just as like Jesus did. Today we celebrate God's goodness, mercy, and grace. For he has guided our very own team conquest in the recently concluded PBE. All the honor and glory be unto God. And just like the Israelites from Egypt before they entered the land of Canaan, our team conquest, there were a lot of whining, there were a lot of complaining, I can't do this, I can't do that. Despite all the blessings and blessings and miracles after miracles that happened in their lives. Just like the, what the Israelites did. Miracles after miracles, yet after a setback, instead of using that setback as a learning experience, they whine. They complain. But that's all part of the journey. That's all part of the journey. And we are glad that we're able to get through that. This year particularly is very tough. I know if you were here in Sabbath school, Leda gave a testimony that she had a very easy time with her, uh, with, uh, with Brandon. But I'm telling you, all the other coaches struggled. And all the kids also struggled, but I think that's part of the experience. And we would like to thank the church, church board, all our church family for supporting us all, all the way. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to our Divine Worship uh, Program. And as I mentioned by Ms. Dottie earlier, we have a lot of visitors. Well, I know my visitors, but I see some folks there in the back uh, with, uh, along, uh, uh, with Brother Tim. Is this your first time attending our church, sir? Yes? Yes. yes. Would you, would you mind stand, standing up to be recognized by, this, by the congregation? Right. Are you, all, are you all visiting or are you all here from Odessa? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Welcome to Odessa SDA. All righty. Is there anyone else? That I, uh, any other visitors? All right. Yes, ma'am? Where, where are we coming from? And are we staying or are we just passing through? Visiting. Visiting family. You're staying. All right, brother. Good, good, good. And I think, I believe you're a Pathfinder age. How old are you, brother? Ten. Ten. Good. Great. And if you're staying, if you're staying, you're welcome to, our, to join our Pathfinder club. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, for our visitors, 
I have a visitor come for my family from the Philippines. Uh, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my nephew, my niece, and my other niece from California. Would you mind standing? And of course, my mother-in-law. They're all. From, they are. That's the brother of Miss Almira. They are all coming, traveling from the Philippines. And also, I got my folks too. My dad and my sister, all the way from California as well. They're all here visiting with us. Would you mind standing up, Dad, sis? And I am, and I, thank you. And I hope I'm not missing anyone. All right, oh yeah, I forgot. We were, we're always together and I forget that they're visiting. Our, my boys from Lubbock, the board and Obani, can you, would you mind standing up? Say hi to the, to the congregation. I hope I didn't miss anyone. Guys, welcome back. How are y'all? You're still part of the club. We're, we missed you so much. All right. Anyone else? All right. Now for some announcements. Right after church, right after we partake of the spiritual food, we will be having our special lunch potluck to my left, your right. Everybody is invited. Please stay after the service. Do we have any more announcements, I believe? Okay, this is the, this is the second uh, reading for the membership transfer from Odessa English Seventh-day Adventist Church to Fondren Southwest SDA Worship Center in Missouri City, Texas for, Ms., uh, for Cynthia and Daniel Oriaku Jr. This is, okay. I, I, uh, Teresa made the motion to accept the membership transfer. Is there a second? Please raise your right hand. All right, thank you. All right, upcoming events. July 6th will be the Adventure and Pathfinder Investiture. July 22, 27, all the kids are, what, are, what all the kids have been waiting for is our Vacation Bible School. It is themed scuba. And if you need uh, more details, if you wanting to help, help out, you could uh, reach out to Miss Natalie Baiza for more details. And what we have all been waiting for, for the Light Bearers Pathfinder Club, the thing that we've been preparing for in the past five years, this is the big event that we've all been waiting for, the International Pathfinder Campery that will be held for the very first time in Gillette, Wyoming. That will be in August 5 to 11. And I, like I mentioned, all these programs, we pray, we ask for your prayer that, you would, that the Lord would guide us all throughout this journey and all throughout this endeavor. And sometime uh, on the third quarter of... Uh, of this month, or first quarter, of, uh, last quarter, would be the set, uh, will be the women's retreat in Lubbock, Texas, the Texaco women's retreat uh, on September 2022. If you need more details, just reach out to Miss uh, Lay, Tr Tracy, Tracy. Women's retreat, and then every Wednesday we invite you. That we are uh, having our Wednesday prayer meeting at 7 p.m. And we invite you to study with us. Are we still doing the Amazing Facts Pass or we're doing a different? We're trying to tweak it a little different. We're making it a little different this time. And we are hoping for a more, a better turnout. So if you have time on Wednesday, 7 p.m., you're all invited to our prayer meeting. And also we have a prayer line. All the access code, the info is right there. Uh, flashed on the screen. If you have your bulletin, you should have all those details too. You could join our prayer line every Monday, Thursdays, and Sunday. If you have a specific prayer request, we have a prayer box at the foyer. Please put in your, uh, your request and let the prayer team pray for you. And then, do you have any more announcements? Okay, choir, is it the adult? Adult choir practice after this. And now, let me call on Elijah Elnar as he recites Joshua chapter 3, the living God, and this is literally when the Israelites crossed over the Jordan to Jericho. Elijah? Elijah. 
Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'll be reciting to you today Joshua 3, New King James Version. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the, that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, the priest, the Levites bearing it, you shall, you shall, you shall, you shall set out from your place to go after it. But there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, for you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priest, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over it before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priest to bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you have come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the, Perizzi the Canaanites, the H Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, and the, and the Jebusites. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the, of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. Now therefore, take for yourselves 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe. And it shall come to pass as soon as the souls of the feet of the priest who bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off and the and the water that comes down from upstream shall rise in a heap. So it was when the people set off from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as those who bore the Ark and as those who bore the Ark stood firm at the feet of the priest who bore the ark uh, bore the ark dipped in the edge of the water for the Jordan overflows all its all its banks during the whole time of the harvest that the waters of the Jordan that come down from upstream shall rise in a heap very far away at Adam the city beside Zeratin and the waters that come down into the sea of Arabah the salt sea failed and were cut off and then the priest crossed over the Jordan on dry ground st stood firm then the priest stood firm on dry ground in the other Jordan in the midst of the Jordan and the and is and all of Israel crossed over crossed over on dry ground until all of Israel had completely crossed over the Jordan. Please rise for our opening hymn on Jordan's stormy banks, I stand.
please be seated. Good morning, church. Do we have any prayers or prayer requests this morning? Yes, Ms. Leslie. Yes, Miss Nyla. Well, praise God, my baby boy got married. Amen. Yes, Miss Almira. Amen. Any silent prayer requests? Okay, let us all pray. Let us all kneel. Dear Jesus, thank you for being an amazing father who looks after all of his children individually. As we grow stronger, our faith in you grows deeper, and for that, we are very thankful. We know that the plan you have for our lives will slowly unfold with each new day. And Lord, we come before you today in need of your healing hand. In you, all things are possible. May you hold our hearts within yours and renew our minds, body, and our soul. Give us the strength to move forward on the path you have laid out before us. May we cast our worries upon you, that we may be more focused on our salvation. Please answer the prayer requests of your people and in the people that are alone, and know the desires of their hearts. We pray for our speaker that he may impart your words to us, so we will be enlightened and more faithful to you, and be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. Can our deacons please stand? Let us pray for the tithes and offerings. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless the tithes and offerings today. Thank you for giving us our daily bread and providing us our needs. May the money collected today be used mightily to finish thy work. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
before I forgot to mention, uh, Macadia, who recited uh, Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 5 is actually one of the, uh, the victory song uh, after Deborah and, uh, has defeated, uh, with Barak, has defeated Sisera. So both of them sang a song. And now, on the next part of our program, I would like to ask Asha Atumani, as she will recite Joshua chapter 14, and this is about when the land west of Jericho is divided among the children of Israel. So I invite you to open your Bibles and uh, read with her or memorize it with her, uh, Judge, uh, Joshua chapter 14. I will be reciting Joshua 14. These are the areas in the land of Canaan which the children of Israel inherited, which Alazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of Israel distributed as an inheritance to them. Their inheritance was by lot, as the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses, for the nine tribes and the half tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of the two tribes and the half-tribe on the other side of the Jordan, but to the Levites he had given no inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were of two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and to the Levites they had given no part in the land, except cities to dwell in with common lands for their livestock and their property. As the Lord had commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, said, You know the word which the Lord spoke to Moses the man of God concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when, the, when Moses sent me out to spy the land, and I brought the word back to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since he spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And here I am today, 85 years old. As yet, I am as strong as this day, as on the day that Moses sent me. My strength was as it was then, so as it was now, both for going out and for go coming in. Now, therefore, Give me this mountain in which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that their cities were great and fortified. And it may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. So Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb as an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. The name of Hebron formerly was Kirjath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. Then the land had rest from war. Thank you. I'm requesting all the children to please collect the uh, children's offering children's offering
So there you have it. Those are just the few chapters that our children have studied all throughout their PBE. Elijah, how many chapters are assigned to you? Seven chapters. Asha, how many chapters? I know you have the most. How many, how many verses? About 200 verses each child. And they have to memorize it because they have to take a test and all that. But like I said earlier, this is one avenue for our youth to have an in-depth study of the word. But at the same time, build that relationship with Jesus Christ. And also, the other objective is to use the study of the scripture to reach out to others, just like Jesus did. Let me leave you with this uh, verse before I call the special music from Romans chapter 15, verse 4. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And now I'm calling the Odessa light bearers as they will render to the Lord our special music. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you. 
For today, our speaker needs no further introduction. If you belong in this church for the past decade or so, you probably know him. He has visited you, he has prayed for you, has come to your house. He probably has dined with you as well. Our, our speaker for today, the mouthpiece of the Lord for today, is no other than our church pastor, Pastor Abner is on, but I think he has something in store for our fathers for today. Pastor is on. Well, I call that Pathfinders in Action. That's the reason why every Pathfinder Sabbath, and although I have two churches, used to have three churches, I make it the point that Pathfinder Sabbath, I'm here in Odessa, because I myself gain a blessing only with the uh, white, uh, beautiful songs, but you could see our young people really active and working and doing something for the Lord. Amen. They're not just sitting there and, you know, criticizing. They are here to work and to spread the word. And I'm, I'm happy with uh, to see I, our young people in action, youth in action. Before we go any farther with our message, I just like to honor our fathers who are here today. It's one time in the year, although we think of our fathers throughout the year, but this is a special day. So I like to call our fathers to please stand and uh, come in front and I would like to have a special prayer. We would like to dedicate you to the Lord today. So if you're a father, please come forward. And these are the fathers of our church. And uh, they're the pillars of the home. And today we would like to honor them. The Bible says, In Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God is giving you. Amen. A few weeks ago, we honored our mothers, and today, this is your day to shine. Fathers, we honor you, we give thanks to you for your leadership, not only in your homes, not only in your communities, but also in the church. And so, uh, I salute you for what you do, for the dedication that you do, and for what you share in your uh, families. So, uh, we'd like to give you something. Uh, David would, uh, so if you are a, ma uh, I mean, a wife or a daughter or somebody, you could get something from uh, from David and give it to anyone or just uh, somebody here would like to stand and help and give to the fathers something that would uh, remember them. And Alfie, where's Alfie? And Alfie is also giving you something. <laughs> to remember you. Honoring fathers on Father's Day, for I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord. Genesis 18, 19. And these Bible uh, markers are complements of the North American division. So for, for you today, okay? 
So these are book markers. And Alfie is uh, also distributing something for our fathers. <laughs> Okay. At this point, we would like to dedicate through a prayer our fathers. So, uh, please join me. Bow your heads as we pray. <clears throat> Let's pray. Lord, today is a special Sabbath day because we could have this opportunity and privilege, Lord, to just uplift the fathers of this church and just thank them, Lord, for the dedication they, they do for their respective families, communities, and also the church. And so today, Lord, I do pray for the fathers that in a special way you will anoint them with the unction of the Holy Spirit, that, uh, Lord, they may... Uh, be able to accomplish the task and the responsibilities you have given them as priests of their home, leaders in their spiritual journey, and that they may lead with the humility and with dedication that comes from you. Bless these fathers also, Lord, as they seek for their daily bread to provide for their families, their children, and their spouses. I do pray, O oh Lord, that you will give them, Lord, the health and the ability, Lord, to find good job and work that will honor your name. And I do pray also, Lord, that you will bless these fathers as they continue, Lord, their active participation in the Lord's work. Help them, Lord, as they exemplify you in the workplace, at home, at school, and in the church, Lord. Exemplify Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I do pray, O oh Lord, that you will bless this band of uh, gentlemen, that we could unite together in finishing the work of the Lord, and pretty soon Jesus will come. So today, Lord, I do pray that you will give the fathers good health, long life, but most especially, Lord, a strong faith in you until Jesus comes. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you, fathers, and we truly appreciate each and every one of you. Okay, have a Father's Day. <laughs> thank you. I like to commend our Pathfinder Club. A few a few weeks ago, they left. They were not here in our church for that one Sabbath because they were participating in the division-wide uh, Pathfinder Bible experience. And how were they able to represent our church? in uh, Greeley, uh, Colorado. It's because they have undergone rigorous training and study of the Bible. They participated, I think this is the fourth year that they have participated, and this is the second time that they have reached the union level, uh, or division level, okay? And uh, it's, and I'm proud of them because to reach first place is not easy. They have to go to rigorous training, as I have said, continued study. They're here every week, Fridays, Wednesdays, sat Saturdays. And uh, of course, I thank the counselors, the coaches for really uh, working with them. And for the church board, of course, for financially supporting our pathfinders. And as you could see, it paid off. 
they are, uh, we could be proud of them as our ch own children, as our own young people, because they have achieved the highest honor of having first place in our uh, division wide. They have to go through the area which they did in uh, Labok, I mean in uh, San Angelo. Okay, well, I, I'm really getting old. I forget some of those places. That's why when I was uh, listening to the, uh, the memorize, who will memorize Judges 5, Joshua 14, or Joshua 3? I could memorize probably Genesis 1, 1, or John 3, 16. The longest probably is Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments. But who will memorize all the Perisites, Amalekites, Hittites, Jebusites? What are the other types that you uh, mentioned? Odessites? <laughs> so memorize all those uh, names. So I, my, 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 you know, I salute them. I really admire. I give my admiration to those uh, pathfinders. And of course, I would like to thank uh, the leaders, uh, Almira and Andrew Padin. Remember, they came here to our church 10 years ago. That's why Andrew said a decade ago, I was their pastor, okay? And I met them somewhere here, somewhere we took them how to eat at, uh, I think uh, that was at uh, CC's, right? Because uh, we, we uh, I don't eat a lot of cheese, okay? But uh, that was uh, one day that we went there. And those kids were very uh, shy. The, the couple is very timid, very reserved. Of course, now they're not timid anymore. <laughs> And that's uh, anymore. And they have, uh, you know, I see them prosper and uh, lead these uh, young people and energize our pathfinders. And so thank you for your leadership. What our pathfinders are now, it's because it's just a testament to their dedication and the time and efforts that they have uh, given. So, how many of you here would like? to promise that you will continue to support and pray for our Pathfinders, please raise your right hand. Amen. So to the Pathfinders, you have the backing, you have the back of church, and if you are Pathfinder age, and I see some of you in the congregation that are Pathfinder age, I would like to encourage you, recruit you, Talk to our leaders, talk to our pathfinders, because we need you, okay? We like you to get involved in this, uh, in this uh, ministry that we have, okay? And so, uh, and today I know some of you don't have kids, but I'm glad that you are here still praying and supporting and uplifting our young people. I'd like you to tell me who gave this quotation? The quotation says, with such an army of workers as our youth, rightly trained, might furnish how soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming savior might be carried to the whole world. Neil Wilson? How many of you said the president? Leroy Sakon? Who who uh, said this uh, this quotation? <laughs> of course, yeah, our prophet of the church from the pen of inspiration. She was quoting this in her final vision in March 3, 1915. And uh, not long thereafter, she passed away. She died in the same year, July 16, four and a half, uh, half months later. And this quotation was, uh, this vision was published in the Review and Herald in April 
15, 1915, entitled, A Message to Our Young People. A Message to Our Young People. How important are young people in the church? Very. Okay, that's the word I'd like to hear. Very. Okay. Did you know that our church was started by young people? How old was Ellen White when she had her first vision? She was just 17, right? That was in 1844. She was only uh, 14, I think, when she started uh, listening to uh, William uh, Miller. Okay? Because, and I, we know that at age 9, she had an accident, right? She was with her twin sister and struck her, a classmate, I guess, struck her in the it's a stone in the forehead. But she continued to, you know, be dedicated to the Lord and uh, studying uh, prophecy. And in, at 17 years old, she was one of the pillars and leaders that started the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Along with other young people, the church was started with young people. James White, her husband, was also young, right? And Rachel Preston Oaks, the Sabbath, James Bay, uh, Joseph Bates, Hiram Edson, uh, on the san the, uh, had the sanctuary vision, and John Loughborough, uh, one of the uh, pioneers. Uh, John uh, Nevin Andrews, our first missionary uh, overseas. They were all young people, right? And John Byington, the first uh, president of the General Conference. Uriah Smith, the author of Daniel and Revelation. They were all young people, of course. When they died, they were already old, okay? Uh, so when you see some pictures, oh, Ellen White is old, or James White, they're old, they have, you know. Because that was when, uh, during, uh, they would also get old. Let me, uh, tell me who were the first youth leaders of the church that started the young people. Uh, they call it a missionary volunteer, MV. Remember who started MV? If you went to academy, probably you, you will know this Adventist Academy because uh, our textbooks uh, is there about the story of the church. Luther Warren and uh, Harry Fenner, okay? Remember those two names, okay? They were the uh, leaders of the missionary volunteers. Later on, it was JMV, Junior Missionary Volunteers. Later on, it was... AJY, uh, Adventist Junior Youth. Later on, it was uh, AY, Adventist Youth. Later on, it was AJY, Adventist Junior Youth. Uh, what do you call our young people uh, these days? AY, AY, right? Okay, AY. How many of you have been to AY? Okay, good, yeah. So what time is AY? Usually an hour before sundown, we gather our young people and have them come and uh, close the Sabbath, okay, with a uh, meeting together. And who is our young people leader in our church? Huh? Where's Leslie? Oh, right here. Okay, I'm sorry. You're in front. Okay. So Leslie is our young people leader, and she brings with her her experience from Jamaica among uh, youth leaders over there, and you know, uh, our young people are vibrant and energetic throughout the world. And here we are represented, uh, we are a mini general conference here because we are represented by different countries throughout the world. Adventists that are, you know, from Mexico, from the Philippines, from Jamaica, from Zambia, from uh, Zim uh, Zimbabwe, from Ghana, anyone else here from uh, from Rwanda, I guess uh, there's one from Rwanda, from Kenya. We are all representative of countries uh, from all the world. And we know that uh, we are a bunch of energetic believers in the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Pathfinders is a church-centered spiritual activity. 
designed for our young people starting at age 10. So if you're 10 and you're not yet with Pathfinders, we encourage you. If you're below 10, you're adventurer, okay? Yeah, well, you could not hide. You could not go anywhere. We still like to recruit you, okay? You're adventurer, okay? And it is a department of the Seventh-day Adventist Church which works specifically with the cultural, social, and religious occasion of children and young people, our teens. The mission of the Pathfinders is to give young people opportunities for spiritual development, leadership development, we'd like to train them as leaders of the church, for community service, and assisting people in becoming ready for Jesus soon coming. We are called Adventists because we believe in the second Advent. We believe that Jesus is coming soon. And, and if they, the uh, uh, people call you, or oh, you're an Adventist, be proud of it. Because that is our faith. That is our hope. We long for Jesus to come soon and to come again. He came here the first time as a baby, okay? In a, born in a manger, right? A humble... Uh, coming, but he will come again. Not as a humble baby in a manger, but he will come as the king of kings and lord of lords. He will come again when the sky will be open and he will come through the clouds of angels and redeem his own. We would like to be there in that first resurrection morning. <coughs> the dead in Christ will rise first and those who are alive like you and me, who are still alive. I long for Jesus to come in my generation, in my time, so that we will never taste death. And we will be reunited with those that have been resurrected in the clouds. Okay? That will be a rapture in the clouds. That will be a great reunion in the air when Jesus comes again. The Pathfinder organization was created In the year, how many of you could let, tell me what year Pathfinders was created? First time? So this is also not only a sermon, but this is a history class, okay? <laughs> For you as Adventists to know your roots, okay? 1927, put that in your notes, okay? Pathfinder Club, first time, 1927, okay? <clears throat> Missionary Volunteer Society, the first uh, youth society, was in 1907. 1907. And today, our pathfinders throughout the world had grown to how many? Our membership, you guess our membership, we are already uh, about 20 million Adventists around the world. Okay? 20 million, okay? About 1 million uh, reside in the United States. So only, only 5 or 8% uh, to 6% are in the United States where the church started, okay? Uh, more than 90% of our membership is in the 200 countries around the world, okay? So our Pathfinders numbered two million, two million Pathfinders. And anyone who accepts and promises to abide with the Pathfinder pledge and law, regardless of their church affiliation, is accepted as a Pathfinder, okay? So what are the, uh, Pledge and law that you said today? By the grace of God, I'll be pure and kind and true. Okay. That's the pledge and law. Okay. And what is the song you sang? Pathfinder song. Oh, we are the Pathfinder 
strong. The servants of God are we. Faithful as we march along in kindness, truth, and purity. A message to tell to the world. The truth that will set us free. King Jesus, the Savior's coming back. That's the Advent message. He's coming back for you and me. This is our hope. Jesus is coming. And our motto is my relationship to Jesus Christ is of such a nature that compels me to share with anyone who will receive it. The gospel, the good news of his soon return. So the Advent uh, Pathfinder aim is the Advent message to all the world in my generation. So today, I encourage our, our church to give official recognition and encouragement to our Pathfinder Club here in our church and to acquaint that that's the purpose of our Pathfinder Sabbath is to acquaint our congregation with the scope and possibilities afforded by the Pathfinder Club in the development of our junior and junior youth and our children. And if you are here on Pathfinder's uh, uh, day, I mean uh, Sabbath or you know on Sabbath afternoon, our Pathfinders after potluck would stay here and do their classes and do their missionary endeavors and do their community services. And this one represents the classes that they have taken, okay? I'm looking who has the most classes among our Pathfinders. Huh? Uh, come here, uh, come here, Daniel. Okay. So, how many classes have you taken? Uh, many. Oh, Eliana has more. Come here, Eliana. Okay. Come here, uh, we'll compare. Come here, uh, Daniel. Oh, Wow, yeah. She has more. This has three rows right there. I have to make my uh, mind wider. <laughs> 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 So these are, uh, see, I, I'm, I'm very proud and happy to wear this uniform because you cannot wear this uniform unless you are an invested pathfinder, okay? So we will have an invested shirt soon because those that are new recruits, we will invest them. But you will be proud when you wear all this, okay? Because these are symbols that you have accomplished something in your pathfinder club. The class these uh, patches, these honors. I have, this is a small honor because I was just first grade when I got this. I was still small, okay? I'm still small. <laughs> but this one, my, my badge, uh, for second grade, I have this, I'm big, okay? For the first grade, I have okay. my silver,
accomplishments. Okay? So, Pathfinders is to encourage greater, the purpose of this Sabbath is to encourage greater cooperation and support from our congregation to our Pathfinder Club and to recruit additional Pathfinders. And I could see some that we could recruit. So, after the service today, I know some of you would like just to go, okay? But please stay here, okay? Because I need to talk to you. I like to encourage you, okay? To come and join us. Join us for potluck, okay? And so I could encourage you. And we would like also to recruit some more staff members. How many of our staff members? Please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. We need more than five staff members, okay? Six, okay? And so if you have that burden that you would like to work with uh, Pathfinders, let us know, okay? And lastly, oh, uh, there's two more, okay? Pathfinders Sabbath is for members to have a greater sense of belonging to the church by their active participation in the worship hour. So once in a while during worship hour, like today, we have this uh, worship hour, we give it to the Pathfinders for their program. And lastly, the Sabbath is to give an opportunity for the church to provide more financial assistance for the club by giving liberally to the Pathfinder Club through your offerings, okay? And I know I could see some of you here had been support, supportive uh, financially and would like to appreciate you, okay? And uh, our Pathfinders are able to go to these trips, to these uh, activities, camping and PBE because you have provided, supported financially. So thank you very much. Uh, for your support, especially the board members. So I'd like to end by sharing with you the motto of the Pathfinders, the love of Christ. Pathfinders, what's the motto? The love of Christ compels me. Okay, that's not difficult to memorize. The love of Christ compels me. And what's the explanation? We are drawn, you are drawn, I am drawn by his exemplary life, Jesus' life. The symbolic act of his crucifixion, his conquering resurrection, and his promise of an earth made new in the pattern of the original creation. And the closer I find myself to him, to Jesus, the closer I find myself identifying with the needs of my fellow human beings. So the love of Christ compels me. So today, before I close, may we all be compelled to be drawn to the love of Jesus Christ. And in doing so, we will reach others for Jesus and his kingdom. This is my prayer. Our, for our closing song, uh, my, my niece, Sophia Drift Balanzuela, will be rendering to the Lord a special music. And then after that, we'll, ha we'll sing We Have This Hope.
Let's pray. Lord, help us to reach one, each one of us, somebody, Lord, that we could bring to our Lord Jesus Christ, and for them to experience, Lord, the gift of salvation. And thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today where we could be energized and encouraged and revived and be, Lord, acquainted again with the message that we have accepted that Jesus is coming soon. And help us, Lord, to share this to others, the hope of his soon coming. In his name we pray. Amen.
Do we take this out?